Dun, 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 dun. Look what I got, fellas. Got this to show you guys. Um, it is the Meng A7V tank and engine kit. Uh, it's a very limited edition, being the black box. So I've um, just been scouting around on eBay and various sites, especially here in Australia. There's really not many of these floating around at the moment. But depending on you know, if you live in Asia or Europe somewhere, you might get a few more of these floating around. But over here, they're pretty scarce. So it's a black box, like I said. There's not much um, color on this box except for the nice Meng logo that sticks out on the side here and the rest of it's just a dark grey box with a black stripe and all the rest is in white print and there's really no point showing you these other leading edges around the edge because it just pretty much has this on the side so it's going to be a pretty cool box to keep anyway once I've built this kit um, just want to say get out there and get this kit while you still can it is a very limited run and as most limited run kits go, the prices seem to skyrocket once um, the availability becomes very limited. So, like I said, get one while you can. This was given to me for Christmas by one of my best friends, Greg Frost. So, thank you very much, man. Um, wasn't expecting this. So, he basically just pulled this out of the beer cart and went, there you go, before we can start drinking beer the last few days. So... Let's have a look at this kit, eh? Alright, let's crack this open. And I'm going to get rid of this main box for the time being because there's some really good stuff that I really want to show you in here. Okay, so the instruction, instruction book is typical Meng style. Um, very clear instructions, but if you notice that the book itself is black just like the front cover. So, and there's really not much to show except for it's multi-language and there's usually a bit of a description about the vehicle here so that's all there so if you want to just have a quick read because I'm not going to go reading this whole thing um, it's going to take forever or you're more than welcome just to pause the screen I am shooting in 2k so you should be able to pick this up pretty clearly so if you want to pause it go for it and there okay so, basic tools that they re they recommend using with these kits, and there's generally some safety stuff that you should read up here, um, depending on what language that you're going to be reading this in, or what country you're from, so definitely worth reading those if it's your first time modelling, but if it's your first time modelling, I wouldn't recommend doing this, because it'll probably put you off modelling full stop, and it's pretty big. So with the first couple of pages, uh, we've got steps one and two, and it's just all the running gear. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, right there, you click the page. I'm going to go through this construction books fairly quickly because there is a, quite a fair bit to get through this kit. Um, and the touching transmission. So there is a transmission on the on the lower uh, belly plate. And also we have return roller track assembly. Okay, I'm only just reading off what it says here. Okay, I'm not really familiar with this vehicle, uh, World War One, but it is a kit that I've wanted for a long time. So we got the doing the transmission, lower hole assembly, and return roller track assembly on steps three, four, and five. Okay, and step six, seven, we got the return roller racks as well and touching the wheel. So all the stuff that you've done in step one will be going, steps one and two will be going into step seven here. And touching suspension system. Okay, I'm not too sure this is workable. I don't think this will be workable. I'm only just glancing through these instructions, fellas. So um, just excuse me if I'm getting this sort of wrong, but you know you can see for yourself as you're glancing through the instructions Hopefully it's um, the quality is clear enough for you to read the instructions And I've actually changed the lighting so it's not in your face white glare um, So yeah, but uh, the engine assembly Engine assembly is In step 11. I mean it looks pretty good. Okay. And this, can, I'm going to show you why this is special because I think it's, uh, I'm not too sure what it says, but there is a surprise in this kit and why it's a limited run. Uh, we've got the tracks, okay, track is only now. With tracks, and me personally, I don't like building the tracks on the kit 
prior to painting okay I, I generally paint my tracks separately and then put them on the vehicle later on so I mean throughout this build I'm gonna have to like sort of work out when I'm gonna assemble the tracks and you know the best time to put it on because if you don't if you put them on too, too early you can't really paint them and weather everything I like to like paint behind the wheels and inside the tracks and all that but each to their own guys I know some people use masking tape and they paint it all up there's many many ways of painting and assembling tracks on the vehicle so if you're a seasoned armor modeler and you're comfortable doing what you're doing how you're doing it don't change okay guys just do what works for you and so yeah tracks are a funny thing when it comes to armor At, uh, attaching floor and fighting compartment okay so you can see in step 13 but the engine's actually looking quite detailed okay I'm really gonna have a good look at this for you guys and I'm gonna show you how detailed this engine is because I've never actually because the parts are in bubble wrap, okay, I'm going to show you here just quickly, the parts are all in bubble wrap, and I haven't really had a good look, because I've only had this kit in my possession for about two days, so driver's uh, compartment assembly, okay, so we've got a dri um, driver's compartment, we've also got attaching driver's compartment, alright, so once all that's assembled, you whack that on top of the motor, and you can imagine how hot that would have gotten in this fighting compartment, sitting on right on top of the engine, and how noisy it would have been so I mean I, I do feel sorry for the guys doesn't matter what side you were on um, both vehicles or both sides would have would have been very hot very congested inside we do have the radiator okay so I mean there's lots in this kit guys this is probably why Greg got this kit for me because he knows I love love this vehicle and I do like interior of it, um, interior builds Okay, so we've got attaching the radios in step 17. Step 18 is the gun assembly. So this is a multi-part gun in here as well with the turrets. Okay, so and it looks like uh, it's generally to have no glue. So there's no glue indicator, no glue. So these these guns here are workable on this uh, on this vehicle. And step 19 to 21. Uh, similar so you've got more similar to the fighting compartment attaching fighting compartment 2 okay so you can see once we get to 21 it's starting to get pretty busy guys um, there's a lot of detail that's got to go in here a lot of painting a lot of sub assembly before painting okay these aren't this isn't going to be one of those kits where you can build in one hit and then paint it it's going to be a lot of sub assemblies and lots of like assemblies on your bench so we've got a whole armor assembly and you can see here there's a lot of detail inside once again and this is going to be a really nice model and the box itself is pretty heavy when it, when you when, I, when you first pick it up okay so we got um, the assembly of the external armor plating um, to cover the vehicle interior and then what I'm thinking as well guys because it's a uh, an interior build the top plate itself which is I think it's uh, step 36 okay so step 35 and step 36 um, I don't think I'm gonna leave this plate unglued okay this one here and this main plate here is gonna be left unglued so basically I can pop it up I really wanted to, when I display the model I want to show all the interior as well um, I don't want to just close it all up especially with all this detail if I go back to the page that I skipped and I'm gonna show you why you can see there there are hatch options for closed, um, semi-closed, and like open or open, semi-open, whatever, depending on how which way you look at it. Okay, and then we got side doors and viewing ports. Okay, so there's still lots and lots of stuff to um, assemble on the side here. And here is the driver's compartment rear armor assembly. Okay, so we've got all these windows and hatches here okay I don't think these are workable guys I think you've just got to glue them in um, however you choose okay so if I bring this up you can see what I'm talking about okay so it's gonna give you three options there to, um, to display the windows and also if I bring this in you can see how busy this model is going to be inside and out Okay, so we've got the driver's compartment side arm assembly. So this is what I was showing you before, like just the top, the top deck, and the um, driver's compartment armor. Okay, so there's 
Okay, give me lots of detail here. Where do you want to put like you know, bullet ricochets or stuff on this? It's just building World War One and being such a muddy environment. You can just go to town with weathering. It's it's one of those kits where if you love applying mud, um, chipping, scratches, dents, it's just one of those things. These vehicles just got absolutely beat up. And finally, on the last couple of pages, we got a sprue map. Okay, so. It just shows you there's quite a few sprues in this kit um, so and the decal sheet looks pretty nice from what I've seen there is a photo etch fret in this um, they do give you some string for cable now whether you want to upgrade that to brass cable whatever like picture hanging wires what I normally use um, the brass picture hanging wire um, I normally replace that for the string and just throw that string in the spare parts box all right and then here down here this section here are all the resin parts that you get within this kit okay I don't think you can see it but if I bring you in closer closer I mean you can see that there are quite a few resin upgrades that you get in this kit and now this is going to be cool and on the back uh, we do have some um, paint guides on the back which look very nice indeed okay so haven't decided what I'm gonna do it's I mean, whether these are the only colours that you can do, I'm going to have to do some research because, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I don't like these colour schemes, but I just want to see what else is available out there and what I can do. Um, so, yeah. And then the colour reference here is on the back. They're asking for Vallejos on the back. So if you don't use Vallejo paints, there are many um, uh, cross-reference charts you can find online. But basically, if it says red leather, get some that's red leather in your paint, in your, whatever you use. White, camouflage green, olive green, hemp, camouflage brown, red brown, light grey, black, silver, brass, uh, gun grey, which is a metallic, black metallic, sand and field grey. So I mean, it's if you don't use Vallejo, um, you know, if you're like me, you can use like five or six different brands. It's... Yeah, you're not going to have any troubles, really, because it's not like they don't name them. Alright, so that's the back of the book. Alright, so what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to show you all the screws that come in the box. And I'm going to unbag these off camera, and then I'm just going to show you in detail what the screws look like. So you can see as I'm just throwing out the screws, because I have been getting requests that you guys want to see the screws outside of the bag. And I normally don't do it, because... Um, end up deciding not to sell the kit if I end up deciding to sell the kit I mean if they're unbagged it's it sort of makes it harder to sell but I know I'm going to be building this one so I will unbag it for you guys you can see there's actually quite a few bags to put out the box alright so there's that one and there's that and there's another one and some of these bags have got two or three sprues in it okay so I say the duplicates Okay, so there's that one, and then there's some of the interior, or the, sorry, the side, the side sections of this vehicle, so it's pretty big, there's the size of my hand, you can see that it's a fairly big vehicle, and you get a bag of tracks, I think there are four sprues in here, okay, and then we have the decals, but I'll show you these as well. These are in a resealable bag. And the photo wedge fret. And also you get the string in the back of it. And then here are your resin parts. So what I'm going to do guys. Is I'm just going to. Um, I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to unbag all this stuff. And then we can have a look at the sprues in detail. Okay, so this is sprue A. And this will be for the. Um, the running gear section so if you remember in the first couple of steps of the instructions you would have seen this sprue here um, the rivet detail on the bottom here is actually really really nice and the, and the clip points are quite fine along here so I mean you're gonna have to be very careful when you're cutting cutting it off here otherwise you're gonna break this because you, you need this intact um, the raised details on here this looks like cable detail um, if you want to like I know, sand these back and add your own brass wire or lead wire, whatever you guys use to super detail your vehicles, um, you obviously can. And then 
on the bottom here there's really not much detail but there is no flash I mean there shouldn't be any flash guys in like today's kits um, if, the, if you do get a kit with flash in today's like style of model kits I mean it's pretty disappointing because you think after all these years I they would have gotten a gotten it all right but that's pretty much for the sprue the rivet detail is nice it's there's no weird imperfections in the plastic that I can see okay so and this is a Tyrannosaurus series um, man which is the TS okay so that's actually pretty nice okay so this is sprue G okay so these look like the fighting compartment floors um, hang on let me have that double check it looks like the floor of the fighting compartment okay so the checker plate detail or the grip detail on this plastic isn't too like it's very fine okay I don't know if you can see that fellas okay if I just I've had to change the lighting so you can see the actual detail and spray if I get the like what we're trying to show you here is this you can see the recessed panel lines here are actually quite nice and the like I said the mesh the, the grip detail the checker uh, checkerboard checker plate um, or the diamond plate detail is actually nice. There's a bit of a weirdness that goes right here, but I don't think it's going to affect it once you put the primer on there. And the, okay, so we've got a little um, control wheels and things like that in here. All right, but the details are quite nice. And the one thing I do like about main kits is with their clip points, on the very fine parts, it actually contours into a fine point. So, but I mean, it doesn't mean that you can get the clippers and cut right up hard against the part I mean obviously cut away from the uh, cut away from the parts themselves to see it ain't bruise the plastic so I mean there's nothing wrong with this I mean this is going to take a wash really nice and if you long, as long as you lay the paint down nice and thin very thin paint just nice light layers you're not going to lose this detail if you go slapping the paint on this plate here you're not going to yeah all that detail is going to disappear so you've got to be very careful in painting these plates here guys that's pretty much all i can recommend all right so we got sprue b okay so this looks like the part of the side running gear to mount your wheels and things on okay but there's it's not a very busy sprue this one but I think like control art, control levers, it looks like, don't quote me on that, it's just what I'm looking at. And then something, I'm going to go back just to sprue G, okay, and on the back, okay, so on the back of this, you can see that there are, um, there's some pegs that are left on there, okay, and I've noticed them, they're on here too, so they're going to have to be clipped off, I dare say. And which is a real pain in the butt so it's just during the injection process okay so there's, there's going to be a, quite a fair bit of cleanup on most of these parts especially the bigger pieces I've noticed um, which is not going to be fun but I mean it's part of modeling guys it's got to be done if it's there it's there it's we don't we don't have to like it but you know it's that's just part of it unfortunately so the the diamond plate detail is once again back on this piece here so like i said before just keep the paint nice and thin when you're painting this um goo -goo 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 -goo. Yeah, there's actually some nice details nice rivet details that run along here yeah, if you can see it okay it's just along just all along here along here as well especially on the wheels So this is Brew H guys, and it looks pretty nice, so this looks like it's the driver's compartment um, exterior window, exterior wall, um, I'd say this is the, the rear the top plate of the tank, um, cause there's a hatch there, so hatch for that plate, so yeah that I'd say that's for the top, we got some more hatches here. But the details are really nice, fellas. If, um, if I can bring you and show you in, you can really see how sharp these details actually really are on this plastic. And, I, and if you've played with Meg models before, um, you know that the plastic's actually really nice to work with. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, I can't sort of say anything bad about it because I've never had any bad experiences building Meg kits. 
All right, so this is D sprue guys. They're they're duplicated, so there's really no point in showing you both at the same time. But the radiator is the first thing that stands out on this. Okay, you can see that this thing is huge. Okay, so this is yeah, that's a that's a Reaper bottle of paint. Okay, so you can see that it's almost as big as a bottle of paint. So this thing is going to be fairly big. The dry sprocket itself is probably about the same diameter as the bottom of the paint here. Okay, so and there's my thumb. Okay, so you can see it's actually a pretty big dry sprocket. The seats themselves are really nicely detailed. Okay, there's actually like a leathery sort of texture to it. Okay, I don't know if I can really see it. If I can sort of, actually I might just zoom in. Okay, so you can see that the seat has a lot of leathery detail on here and on the back well, you see it's actually very very nice and the radiator itself is what I want to show you you can see that like it's just so it's absolutely gorgeous here so you're gonna have a lot of fun adding washers there is a mold line that goes along the back on the top here okay you can see it if I can get you in there so just get your hobby knife scrape it out if you've got a scraping blade or something like that um, you can use that also if you've got the citadel mold line removal tool that will come in handy for that but it's a real shame that there is a mold line along that piece there so this is case brew guys uh, we got three of these all right so these are multiples mirrored sprues so I can only need to show you one being a small sprue Okay, so we do have a really nice looking machine gun here. And I like this as well. Okay, so Ming is actually putting put very, very tiny clip points on the machine gun ammunition belts here. And they're very, very fine. I'm gonna see if they go right in. I'm gonna use my camera so I can see because my eyesight's not the best. So you can see there the sprue, the machine gun belts themselves okay and then all these other fine little details um, oh these are one piece oh wow now that's cool okay so these machine guns here are one piece um, slight little mold line on here along the outer edges like runs along like that so I mean that's I mean, they're very, very faint too, guys. They're not like they're real chunky um, mold lines, but you just when you cut this off here, just be careful that you don't chop into the plastic. So it's just cut slightly away from the plastic and then just work your way back down to the barrel itself. Um, but yeah, that's case brew. And all these other little parts here, really not too sure what they're for, but you can see that the details are still nice and sharp. Okay. And we have sea sprue. Okay, we got four of these are included in the kit. And these will be the wheels. Okay, very, very tiny wheels. And we get this again. I'm really not too sure what this part is. These little pieces here. I'll just bring you down a little bit. Okay, these are part of the suspension. Okay, so I think there's another one on the other sprue. So you get quite a few and I wasn't too sure what these were before and just had a quick flick through the instruction book okay so these are for your suspension and these here are where you put your wheels in okay so you got two options guys when you build this you can either build all your wheels slap them all in into here under these pins and then paint paint as one piece okay or what you can do is Build your wheels separately and have heaps of little cocktail sticks in a, uh, a bit of a sponge block and then paint them, weather them up and then stick them in, okay? So, I mean, that's, it depends on how detailed you want this model, I mean, and that's probably the way, yeah, I'm not too sure yet, so, I mean, I'm probably leaning towards that way is just paint the wheels separately and then put them in um, and then mask it up and then paint all this. I mean, it's going to be a tedious job, but... I mean, I think the results at the end will be worth it. Okay, so we've just got more 
of the suspension section here. All these little parts, they look like suspension springs. Um, very, very nice details on the springs. A very nice detail on the springs, as you can see there. So 13, 14, 14, and then 15 must have something to do with all this down here as well, because it's on this sprue, so. Uh, you can see there, and then like I said before, this is there's four sprues of this. Okay, so you get plenty of these springs. All right, they're going to be fun to paint. Yay! All right, so that's C sprue, and here we have P sprue. Okay, these so these are the machine guns. We've got the hand weapons for the um, inside the fighting department. We've got there's two sprues of this, um, from what I can see. There's nothing else in the box. Okay, so. We have, oh, looks like a machine gun, a rifle with a bay fixed bayonet. We have two more rifles here. And we have four stick grenades, okay? So these are duplicates. So we've got eight stick grenades, two rifles, uh, two submachine guns, and two rifles down here without bayonets fixed, okay? So whether you use them in this build it's up to you if you don't chuck them in your bits box and you're going to have some nice accessories for your figures down the track okay so but if I zoom in alright so you can see there the details on the rifle Tells on the rifle, there's your stick grenades, and there's your rifles themselves, and there's mold lines are very minimum, I think. And this, so uh, yeah, you can see it, there is only a slight mold line that runs up the side on the top of these around the whole perimeter of this weapon. And the machine guns themselves are actually quite nice, you know, triggers are being hollowed out. Um, even the barrels okay so you might want to drill them out more it's up to you but the, let's see how the rifle itself mm, it's very very nice and we have a couple of sprues here which are J okay so these look like the side armor plate and for the running gear down the bottom okay and then this looks like a window you get two of these like I said okay so one for each side I'd, I'd imagine and these I'd say this is for the driver's compartment window I can see it to the front or the rear um, just by the shape of this piece here and none of these parts are all actually quite sturdy on the sprues. We've got some grab handles now. Whether you want to like make some out of wire, which is probably what I'll do, is I'll probably choose some florist wire and um, add them on there. Probably won't use these. I'll probably keep these for something else. Um, and what else do we have now? This is I'm not familiar with. Um, it's got a have something with this screw here and they might be covers maybe for the uh, for the external of the vehicle I'm not too sure I'd have to go back through the instructions and have a look um, to confirm it but at this stage I'm not too sure but the details are actually quite nice you can see here the rivet detail on here is really nice power line details are nice a couple little grip tabs here it's a good idea and then even there's details on the inside of the plate um, you're probably not going to see these when you build the model but they're there and it's good that they are there because you know they're there when you built the model so it's not really details not missing at all all right and we got the two biggest sprues or the two biggest uh, two sprues with the biggest parts in this kit okay so we've got the front and rear and the top okay of the A7V, okay, very very nice detail. Now that now that we got these out of the bags, I mean you can see that the details are absolutely amazing. Um, 
you love like weathering vehicles like I do, I'm going to have an absolute blast and so are you guys. The front and rear plate is exactly the same, okay, so, I mean, if you end up closing all this up and gluing the roof down, it's going to be a real shame and that's why probably why I advise is leave the top hatch unglued and also the driver's compartment sort of area. Um, if you've got to use rear earth magnets to hold it all down, depending on the fit, it might just be a nice snug little fit without glue. So, I mean, I'm not going to glue these parts down to the vehicle itself. It's going to be some, I want to be able to pull these off and show the insides of the vehicle on display. I mean, it's just going to be a real shame to close everything up just with all the gorgeous detail that's in here on this, on this model. And then same goes with E-Sprue. I mean, that was F-Sprue, guys, I just showed you. Sorry about that. And this is E-Sprue. Um, inside as well, we've got lots of just, oh, like, wow. Like, the, the detail inside here is just crazy, guys. I mean, I mean, this will be my first World War One build. Um, and as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of, like, German armor, World War One and Two. Not so much of modern, um, but I just, yeah, it's just everything was big, bulky. But you see the rivets on the outside are just very, very nice and stunning. And same goes the other piece. I mean, I can't fault, I mean, I've got nothing so far, guys. There's, I can't say anything bad about these sprues um, on this A7V kit. Um, the tracks themselves are pretty much like any other tracks, uh, multiple sprues, and actually a couple of fixed points. And they look pretty simple to build, okay, I think these are workable. Um, but yeah, you can see that they're the, the cleats themselves, the main track link, and then you've got, looks like the assembly tabs here that run for the that run inside the wheels, okay, so the guide horns, I guess you could say, in modern day terms. Alright, so really not much to show, except cleanup's going to be pretty easy, because you've only got two clip points on each part, and then the clip points, you got to be very careful too, if I just sort of zoom in, because I don't think I'll be able to get you. Um, so, I'm just going to grab something to hold, so you can see that the clip points on each part are very, very tiny. And they also run onto the parts themselves. So just be very careful when cutting these off because if you cut too much into it, you'll probably end up like doing damage to these pieces just because they're so small. I mean, they look big on the screen, but I'm actually zoomed in quite, like, zoomed in quite far just to show you. So yeah, just be careful guys when you're clipping these parts off. And while I'm here, I'll just show you the tracks themselves like very carefully. See that there's just the details really nice. And there's the back edge, okay. And also in this, just fill out one of the bags, I just threw it back in the box, but you do get a couple of poly caps here, okay. So I dare say this will be for the drive sprocket, okay, just so they're workable. But yeah, just don't lose that because this is just floating around in one of the bags. So if you do have this kit, just keep an eye out for this, like that you don't pull the sprues out and then throw the bag in the bin and then you've thrown this away. So just keep an eye out for that, okay? So that's also in the kit. Um, here's your PE fret. So if I just zoom in, I'll get you right in here. So that's the right way up. So you can see that the P is actually quite nice. Okay, I'll just give you there you go. You now the detail pops out. Alright, so there's the PE fret. And then there's that piece of string I was telling you about on the back. Okay, I'm not gonna be using that. I'll probably be using a bit of brass wire, like I said at the very start of the video. Alright, so here's the decal sheet, guys. Uh, you can see down the bottom it says printed by Cartograph, made in Italy. So, yeah, some nice German scribble there, some text. 
but yeah, you can see that the decals look nice, and they're not really glossy either, guys. So I mean, it's pretty cool. It's like a semi, like a, like a semi gloss, a bit under that, almost a matte sort of thing. But yeah, very nice there, guys. But here are all the resin parts. They came in two bags. I mean, I'm just going to show you how. I'm just going to show you one bag of how one is packaged, and then I'll go and unwrap the rest of them. Okay, so just a bit of sticky tape holding on there. So these are, oh wow, they're like little bubble wrap bags. So that's pretty cool. So what I might actually do is I might just leave these in the plastic bags because they're actually pretty good quality plastic bags. And I don't want to break them, just try and pull them out. But the resin um, is actually pretty dark. Like some are almost a very dark grey resin and then some are like a light grey. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly unbag all these the engine and looks like the looks part of the motor like a pulley okay so but the first thing I've noticed is that, that there is mold release on here so just give these a just carefully wash these parts before you do <coughs> um, if we start painting them and things like that and also when you are sending these back make sure you're wearing a respirator or your using wet and dry or you're cleaning these up outside because if you've got kids or animals floating around inside your house guys and you don't want other people including yourself breathing in the resin dust because it's not good for you um oops and we do have a broken piston right here already so uh on here so that's pretty not cool so okay that was not for me like being a, not careful it's just broken in the bag so a bit of super glue and a bit of care is going to have to be taken to put these back all right so i'm just going to push all these to the side carefully all right so you can see part of the motor here is and i'm going to zoom in okay so you can see the motor itself okay this is all resin guys okay so you can see that the motor itself is really nice there's a little bit of cleanup here and there, I mean like, there's probably, like there's always going to be mould lines, okay, so like along here, just, I mean it comes off, just give it a little scrape, and just slowly work at it, it'll eventually come out, but you can see that the detail itself is actually quite nice, and you get two of those, let's say, going to be a big, 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 big motor. And there's your pulley that I was telling you about. Looks like for the radiator, I think. I'm just guessing here, guys. And then look at all your push rods for your motor. Unless, you no, know, you just break them off, I think. So there's not broken. You just got to carefully break them off and glue them on. Oh, starting to stress then. So... Whether you clip them off there and you put them on or you just clip them off separately. I'm not too sure how this part goes on. I'm going to have to look at the instructions again. But that's that piece. And then here we have... Okay, so you get two of these in here. But you see the resin pieces themselves are very, very nice. I wish they bagged them separately though, in like each piece, or they put a little a little sponge block or something, you just care if they slot them all in. That way they would have been better, I think. Just make the box just a little bit bigger. <clears throat> I mean if they could add like two, three bucks to the price of the kit for the for the sponge block and a bit to make the box a bit bigger, I mean, yeah, you you'd pay it just so these parts don't get damaged. Or they put in a separate box. You know, just yeah, I didn't really like how they sort of threw it all in the bubble wrap. I was just like, yeah, it's a bit rough. But, you know. So there's that. Some more hosing. Still very nice detail though, I'm not complaining. And the clip points here are actually pretty sensible where they've put them. And some more pulleys, I mean, that's nice. I mean, that could have been plastic maybe, I'm not too sure. 
oh, would have been pretty fine. I'm not too sure, but yeah, they've given it to you in resin, so. So there's that, part eight. There's another jiggle of that hose that I just showed you before. engine details I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that most of this is engine detail because I'm pretty sure that the engine itself is resin so they give you like a resin engine so there's that I mean it's gonna be a bit of a waste and there's another one of those push rod things so there's one that's intact with no broken pieces on it okay so there's that and there's the back side of it And there's that sort of dark grey piece of time. I don't know why that's different from the rest of them. Um, so you can see that the colour difference. I mean, you can see it there. That's a darker, maybe that's a different resin. It's a different mix to make. And then this one's a lighter, lighter shade. But, so there's that part. And there's part 22. Part 14. So, very nice. Want some more. And I couldn't even begin to tell you what these pieces are. This is just I'm just showing you all these little individual parts that you come that comes in these bags. And then some more hose, more hoses or pipe work. And the final what look like radiator um, fans and they're not very big I mean that's you know, just to show you how big these really are that's a 10 mil Tamiya pot okay so that's the lid so you can fit two of these across the lid so they're big but they're not okay so so that's it there that's the last piece out of the kit guys I mean, so that's the unboxing. I'm, I'm, I apologise that the video is pretty long. So that was the unboxing of this Meng German A7V um, tank and engine kit, limited edition. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button to make sure that you see any new videos that come out by me. Um, this channel is going to have a bit of a change in 2018, just sort of trying to work out how I'm going to approach this. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And always feel free to leave your comments down below. Um, if you've got any ideas, or you've got this kit, and you've enjoyed building it, leave some feedback down the bottom. I mean, I'm sure the other viewers would like to sort of hear what you guys got to say. Thanks for watching, fellas. Have a happy new year, and I'll see you guys in 2018. Catch up. Bye-bye.